Do you think the market's overvalued today? I think it is setting itself up for disappointments, at least in the second mm -hmm. half of the year. Inflation's history is it's incredibly stubborn. And you think that you put it away for a while, but it keeps coming back. I'll make a prediction again. The Fed cuts rates. I wouldn't be surprised the market went down rather than up. Hi, Team Value. JJ here. Welcome back. Well, today we're going to catch up with the Dean of Valuation, Aswath Damodaran. A short while ago, I made some videos about how he said NVIDIA was insanely valued and the MAG7 were in, overvalued as well. Today, he's saying the whole market's overvalued and he says why. So let's get into it and I'll react to it. Stock's overpriced ahead of this week's key economic data and earnings season just around the corner. Let's ask the Dean of Valuations, Aswath Damodaran, NYU Stern School of Business Professor. Professor of Finance. Professor, welcome back. It's good to see you. Thank you for having me. I feel like you've taken a bit of a bearish turn um, from your notes. Is that accurate? an accurate assessment of your current market view? I, I, I am more worried than I was a couple of months ago, I mean, or even six weeks ago. And there are a couple of things. One is the good news for this year has been that earnings estimates have been going up. They're not by a lot, but almost consistently over the course of three, three months as earnings reports come out. But at the same time, inflation seems to be much more stubborn than people thought it was going to be at the start of the year. So I think tomorrow's numbers are going to be pretty significant in where the market goes next. And to be quite honest, that's where inflation goes for the rest of the year is going to drive the market, not what the Fed does or does not do. Of course, tomorrow's numbers, he's talking about tomorrow morning. So by the time you see this video, those numbers could be out. And if inflation is sticky, as he's saying, he thinks it's going to be that could affect the market. That's generally what he's saying here. He thinks the market is overpriced and that inflation could be sticky and the market's not pricing that in. But you think tomorrow morning is a binary event. Something too hot could mean the end of this. Uh, would you say it's the end of the rally itself? No, not necessarily, but I think that uh, to the extent that people have pulled back already, and I see a lot more skeptics in the market now than six weeks ago. Some of those highly priced tech stocks have come down just a little bit. He obviously thinks there's some risk there when inflation numbers come out. It gives them another reason to stay on the sideline. So even if they're not selling, they're not buying, and that can, that can by itself cause uh, have an effect on, on the market. So I think it's going to be not necessarily the event, but it's going to be one of a series of events. Just as in 2022, there's a collection of inflation announcements that got us into trouble. This is going to be one more piece of information we use to make a judgment on, you know, where's inflation going? And if you were in the market in 2022, if you're not new to the market, you remember the bear market in 2022, especially for tech. A lot of those highly priced, high multiple tech stocks came down. 60, 70, 80, and even 90 percent. And some people haven't recovered since then. It's thought that interest rates would never go up. Inflation took off, and that surprised a lot of people. And he thinks that the market is getting ahead of itself by, you know, pricing in that inflation has been conquered, so to speak. Looking at the bond market, which to me is the best indicator of what investors think about expected inflation, and you look at the T-bond rate is up from 3.88% to 4.35, 4.4%. That suggests to me that investors in the bond market are expecting inflation to continue to stay above 3%, no matter what the Fed says about that inflation. So inflation could be above 3%. He thinks it will stay there. I think that is a possibility as well. Just my opinion that this level of getting down to 2%, I think that they might be giving that away a little bit. And in the end, it was sort of arbitrary. I'm in New Zealand, and I think that's where it began. I think New Zealand started that, being a small country, you know, back in the 1980s, was it? I think it had this target of 2%, and the rest of the world kind of took that on. And really, Fed Chair Powell, I think, has said not very long ago that maybe, you know, that is not the right target. Maybe they're okay with 3%. But, you know, as with motor in here saying that maybe it won't come down, it'll be stickier. And of course, Michael Burry, he said he was worried about this, you know, double inflation, that it would go down, then bounce way back up. He's been very quiet on, on X on Twitter for a while about that. But he did say that a while ago that he thought there was going to be a, a bounce. I wonder if he still thinks that. Now, if you're getting value out of this episode so far, I'd really appreciate it if you managed to hit that like button on YouTube or wherever else you are watching this with a like button. It helps the algorithms to spread it to more people. So you suggested to our producers, and I'm quoting from the note here, 
The market has over-adjusted to two positive developments over the course of the last year, the decline in inflation from the heights of 22 and the receding of worries about recession. You sound like you're stealing a page from Jamie Dimon's note, you know, where, where he suggests you could see a, a further spike in rates and that the market's just gotten way too optimistic and, and over its skis on the idea that the economy is just out fully out of the woods. And I, and I agree with Jamie on that one, because I think that especially on the inflation front, inflation's history is it's incredibly stubborn. And you think that you put it away for a while, but it keeps coming back. And while the, the probability might be low that you're going to go back to a 2022 level, there is a chance it could happen. I mean, the economy is hot, commodity prices are up. So I don't think you can rule it out. And I don't think the market's incorporating that likelihood enough in terms of pricing it in. Mm, interesting. They talked about Jamie Dimon there, the head of JP Morgan, who's been pretty bearish. He said that, you know, the hurricane's coming in terms of the economy, the recession, which didn't happen. He's been very bearish over the last couple of years, really. And that's what the motor and agrees with him here. And it will be interesting to see if inflation does tick back up and if that does happen, if the market goes down. And he, you know, Aswath Damodaran here saying that that's a risk. He's definitely saying that that's more of a risk than the market is pricing in right now. What's your own view on, on rate cuts? Because I would assume that it, in, in some respects that has to partially at least color your view on the valuation of the market. I'll be quite honest, the, the Fed can raise rates, cut rates, or do nothing to rates, T-bond rates, which is what I watch. I don't care about the T-bill rate as much. T-bond rates are going to take their own path, and that path is going to be independent of what the Fed does. I mean, remember last year, the Fed, you know, if, if, if you think about raising rates, they raised the rates three times. The rates, the T-bond rate did not move over the course of the year. It was responding to inflation. And I'll make the same prediction for this year on December 31st of 2024, when we look at the T-bond rate. Whether it's 3% or 5% will have nothing to do with whether the Fed cut rates. It'll have everything to do with whether inflation is below 25 or 2% or whether it stays above 3%. So he's basically saying that everything depends on inflation. If inflation is sticky or it even ticks back up or stays high, that's going to affect the stock market. Do you think the market's overvalued today? I think it is setting itself up for disappointments, at least in the second mm -hmm. half of the year. I, I think that if you think in terms of asymmetry, the risks on the downside are higher than the risks on the upside. Asymmetry there. So he's talking about probabilities. Investing is about probabilities. For asymmetry, the risks are to the downside now, which the market's not pricing in. That he sees the probability of it going down rather than up. He's not saying, you know, that it's definitely going to go down or definitely go up. He wouldn't say that. But he says the probabilities have changed. I'm not one of those who sells everything and runs for the hills because I don't think it's ever worked for me. I'm a terrible market timer. But this is not the kind of market I would jump in with both feet because um, you are, I think, heading in. And it's not just economic uncertainty. It's political uncertainty. I'm surprised the market is not factoring in some of those uncertainties more in pricing stocks. I mean, we obviously have an election not that, that far away. Um, some would suggest the only thing that really matters in the face of everything is the trend change from the Fed, that we're going to get cuts, we assume, at some point, and why fight the Fed? You know what? I've been hearing that since the start of the year, and markets are up in spite of the fact that the much-promised Fed cuts have not come yet. I'll make a prediction again. The Fed cuts rates. I wouldn't be surprised the market went down rather than up. That's interesting. He thinks the market might go down if the Fed cuts rates. For myself, I wouldn't be surprised if there are no rate cuts this year. We'll have to see, but you know, they could go one way or the other. In terms of investing, you know, it's interesting to think about the macro like this and whether the market's overpriced or not overpriced. But as Warren Buffett says, he just looks at the fundamentals of companies and doesn't worry too much about the macro because you really can't tell what's going to happen. You can't tell what inflation is going to do. You can't tell what interest rates are going to do. People like Ray Dalio have said that in the past, he has been so sure that, uh, that rates would go one way or the other and then they went the opposite way. So he says that you can't invest based on that. Howard Mark says that you can take a temperature of the market, but you can't tell what the market's going to do from one day to the next, let alone, you know, in the next six months. So Demoter in here, he's just talking in probabilities, but he's definitely thinking, you know, the probabilities have changed there.
Now, if you've been a subscriber for a while or you're new here, you might like to check out the Art of Value Patreon over there. I give a weekly summary and update, a candid review of the week's investing, the market, what it's doing, my stocks and the stocks I'm researching. So if you want to be in on that, I'll put a link in the description and hopefully see you over there. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'm going to put links here to those two previous Demoter and videos where he's talking about the elevated state of NVIDIA and the MAG7. I'll put links in the description as well. And thanks to everybody for watching or listening, and I'll see you in the next one.